Hey, welcome back to Herbs and Ease. My name is Kristen, and today we are breaking down the concept of your constitution. Now, this episode is part four in our Herbalism 101 series, where I am getting you the foundational skills, knowledge, and information that you need to safely and effectively bring plant medicine into your life. So you haven't already watched part one, two, and three, make sure you go back and do that so that all the information that we're talking about in today's episode really makes sense. And of course, make sure that you subscribe so you get the next couple of episodes. So you may have noticed that medical care and wellness care just kind of aren't the same thing. And sometimes we need extra extra care and extra support and lifestyle interventions outside of allopathic medicine to actually feel good in our bodies and helping you feel good in your body and improving your long-term wellness outcomes is my jam. It is why I am here and why I do what I do. Now, in our last episode, we broke down a couple of things that you need to know about an herb before you can determine if it is the right herb for you. We talked about herbal energetics and herbal actions. Now, just because an herb does what you want it to do to the body doesn't mean that it's going to make you feel the way that you want to feel. And this is because herbs cannot just be reduced to their primary action, like being anti-inflammatory or being stress relieving or being sedating or being antibacterial. They have so many other things that they do to the body and ways that they affect the body beyond just their main action, herbs are also going to affect the body on an energetic level. And that means herbs may sedate or excite a function of the body or a different process of the body. Herbs can moisten or dry tissue out. Herbs can increase heat or cool down the body. So a lot of herbs are going to have pretty complex effects on the body outside of just that main action that we're seeking. And you might not want some of those effects or they just might not leave you feeling very good. So before you pick an herb to work with, you also need to know your energetic tendencies, also known as your constitution. So your constitution refers to the unique combination of physical, mental, and emotional characteristics and tendencies that make up you. And it's important to have a basic idea of your constitution so that you can make the best choices for what herbs you should be working with on a regular basis. So your constitution is largely fixed and it's determined by your genetics. It can be subtly in influenced by your lifestyle habits and your environment and your experiences. But for the most part, there's not much about our constitution that we can change. Now, there are a few different uh, traditional perspectives on constitution, mainly from Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine. Those are going to be the most accessible and common systems of medicine that most of us have access to learning about. And we're not really going to get into any of those topics today because this is a series on Western herbalism. But if it's something that you are interested in, just leave me a comment and let me know. Learning a little bit more about these systems can really help add another layer of understanding for how our bodies function and how our bodies work and how they relate to herbal remedies and other lifestyle interventions. So it's pretty fascinating. Now in Western herbalism though, we don't really have names for our constitutions. We mostly categorize individual tendencies as hot or cold, dry or moist, and tense or lax. And being aware of your tendencies is really key to self-awareness and to understanding when an herb is likely to improve your wellness or make you feel not that great. So it really helps us predict how successfully our time working with an herb is going to be, especially long-term. So to determine your constitution, I have created a little PDF on understanding energetics with a constitution quiz in the link below. It's totally free. And the quiz that I use, I actually adapted from some Ayurvedic quizzes as well as from the quiz that Rosalie de la Forette puts in her book, Alchemy of Herbs. Now, this is actually a really phenomenal resource if you're interested in energetic and constitutional herbalism because it's a beginner-friendly book that covers a lot of these concepts. And that's actually pretty rare for a beginner herbalism book to have things like energetics and tastes and constitution. And she puts it all there in a way that makes it really simple and clear for most people to understand. She's also a really great teacher and she has a podcast and a YouTube channel of her own 
So make sure that you go follow her as well so that you have a couple of different touchstones for how you learn plant medicine. The quiz is going to ask basic questions like whether or not you're prone to being dry or cold, or if you have oily skin or dry, it's going to ask you about your sleep and about your digestion. And so you can add all of those things up and then you'll have a pretty good idea of what your constitution is. And once you know your constitution, then you can match the energetics and the actions of an herb, and you can determine if an herb is going to be a good match for you. Now, if you were using an herb for an acute ailment, like a cold or a flu, energetics might not really matter that much since you're only using an herb for a short period of time. But if you're using herbs for chronic health conditions or general wellness and vitality, then energetics are really going to matter. For example, I'm really prone to being cold. I don't sweat a lot. Uh, I always have a sweater with me and I'm I'm also pretty dry. I'm not particularly prone to a lot of post-nasal drip or a lot of mucus or oil buildup. So when I took an herb called rhodiola for a few days, which is a very astringent, very drying, very cooling adaptogenic herb, a lot of people are going to use this for things like depression or anxiety and to improve mood and to support the immune system and to help with fatigue. After just about two to three days of using this herb, I got so uncomfortable because it is so astringent. I felt really dry, like I could not get enough water and it messed up my digestion a little bit, making me a little bit constipated. So as great of an herb as rhodiola is, rhodiola is just not a good herb for my body. And even though it had some of the compounds and actions that I really wanted in my life at the time, it just did not have the right energetics to actually make me feel good and improve my wellness. Now, maybe you've had an experience like this, and if so, just let me know in the comments, have you ever used an herb that maybe did what you wanted it to do, but didn't really make you feel the way that you wanted to feel? Starting to put language to our experience in that way is a really important part of somatic intelligence and somatic wellness where we are actually able to understand the sensations and messages that are coming from our body so that we can use those messages to actually make ourselves feel good and feel better. Now in herbalism, there is something called the herbal sweet spot. And this is also in Rosalie de la Forette's book. She explains it really, really well in that book. I've seen it in a couple of other locations, but the way that she describes the herbal sweet spot is probably one of my favorites. And it's basically where the actions and energetics of an herb plus your constitution and the energetics of your ailment, whatever issue that you are struggling with, where they all come together in a Venn diagram and where the overlap occurs, that is your herb. That is your herbal sweet spot. Whatever herb is in the center of those circles, that is the herb that you want to be using. And that's the one that's going to work best with your body. Now, sometimes there might not actually be an herb that falls in that sweet spot directly, depending on your, what your issue is, especially for more complex ailments. But fortunately, you can do things to lessen the undesirable effects of an herb using another herb. And this is an example of herbal synergy. And that's where combined effects of multiple herbs are greater than the sum of their individual effects. And herbal synergy can happen in a couple of different ways. So first we have herbal balance, and that is where we can kind of use opposing effects of different herbs to cancel each other out. So if I was really hell bent on working with rhodiola, even though it's very drying and very astringent, I could have paired it with another herb that is really moistening and creates a lot of moisture and lubrication, maybe something like marshmallow and perhaps something like slippery elm. Now, herbal balance could also look like taking an herb that is really stimulating and balancing it with an herb that is really calming or sedating. Now, another way that we can achieve herbal synergy is through potentiation. And this refers to when two herbs put together result in a stronger therapeutic effect than if we were to just use the herbs individually. And a good example 
example of this is when we pair black pepper with turmeric. So the main component that makes turmeric so anti-inflammatory is called curcumin. And curcumin is better absorbed in the body when it is paired with black pepper. So these two herbs potentiate each other. Now we can also have complementary actions in herbalism. And this is where when we have herbs with different properties or different mechanisms of action, they come together to create better benefits than if they were just used alone. Now, for example, one herb might have really good anti-inflammatory properties, while another herb has great antioxidant properties. And when we put them together, they work synergistically to reduce inflammation and oxidative stress more effectively than when they're used individually. A good example of this is when I combine Guduchi and Anantamul, two Ayurvedic herbs that are not that common in Western herbalism, but really come together well to decrease chronic inflammation in the body without cooling the body down too much. I use this in my main uh, autoimmune flare care blend. Another good example of this is when we put St. John's wort and lemon balm together, especially during the winter, to help with something like seasonal depression and mood disorders. They're both great antidepressant herbs, but when we combine them, they can really complement one another. So I really think that this all goes to show that herbalism is actually a pretty complex field of study. And it's really not as simple as Googling what herb is good for this issue and then popping some tinctures or popping some capsules. There's a lot more that goes into herbal recommendations than just what does the herb do. But fortunately for you, now you know a whole bunch about how to choose the right herb for you and what goes into making that choice. Now, make sure that you subscribe because we have a couple more episodes in our Herbalism 101 series. We're going to talk about dosage and duration. We're going to talk about herbal safety, and we're going to talk about how to actually create our own herbal apothecary. So you absolutely do not want to miss that. And until then, uh, make sure that you get the PDF so that you can take your constitution quiz. Let me know what your constitution is. Let me know what some of your energetic tendencies are. And if that gives you any insight to some of the herbal mistakes that you've made in the past. And then until next week, stay balanced and yeah. Okay. I love you. Bye.